So when you're on set <clears throat> and you know you're doing the principal shooting, who are you networking most closely with? Is it the art director? In the art department? Yeah. Um, um, when I'm on set, I've got a, uh, the on set dresser is usually my first direct contact. Okay. Now, if I'm coming up to a set, like if we were shooting in this room and the next room was, let's say, three hours from now, I'll walk over there as soon as I can in the day because odds are the, uh, the set, dec set decorators over there finishing dressing the set. Mm -hmm. And what I'll do is I'll bring over the um, producers, the writers, the showrunners, the director, whoever needs to approve that set. And we're going to walk over there and take a look at what she's got or he's got. And in, in that case, it'll allow them to see in three dimensions what everybody's been talking about on paper. They've seen pictures of chairs. They've seen samples of, of, of carpet and swatches of, of curtains. But now we're seeing it for real. And we go, oh, crap. Uh, change the gel order. So now we're going to light it a little differently. Um, hey, we forgot to tell you it's at night and we can't see out the window because we don't have a backing. Can you get us curtains? And you send one of your buyers off to Ikea or Macy's or wherever you get your curtains from at the last minute. Um, and so we come up with solutions. I may say, uh, when, when I deal in those situations, I try to go there first by myself just so that I can say to the set decorator, are you ready? Do you have any questions? It also allows me to preview problems mm -hmm. because I can walk in there and go, ooh, okay. <laughs> um, and then I'll go back, I'll say to the director or the person who needs to see that problem. And then we can identify it before it becomes a full-fledged everybody sees it. Because again, it doesn't do me any good to embarrass somebody. My job is to help them succeed. So even if I've got to fix their problem, I'm not doing it in such a way that it humiliates them. That doesn't do anybody any good. Um, and usually the people that are in there will figure that out, that, that I'm not the enemy. I'm here just to help them do the best work they can. Now, if I see that not happening, that's another story. Then I'll go to the production designer and say, hey, I'm having a problem. Mm -hmm. This is happening. Sure, absolutely. Um, I wanted to talk to you, if I could, about a project that you worked on. Um, princess Kealani, but, a.k.a. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> the last Barbarian princess. princess. Barbarian princess, yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because I'm so interested in doing period pieces, and it was a period piece. And, and just the difficulties that you may have had or the challenges you may have had working in two different locations, in Hawaii and, and in also England. in England, yep. and the crews, the different crews that you had to work with. Um, that was such a blast. <laughs> that was so much fun. That was, um, I don't know... You may or may not like the film, but it was such a blast to shoot. It was wonderfully challenging. There was tragedy involved. There was um, two different continents, you know, basically opposite sides of the world. We were shooting in Hawaii and in, in uh, uh, northeastern England um, in a little place uh, called Holcomb Hall, which is in the middle of nowhere, beautiful countryside, wonderful giant manor. And then in Hawaii, we were in the palace. We shot in the palace. They allowed us to shoot in the King's Palace. Wonderful, amazing experience. And you were the first production to ever be able no, to shoot there? I think there are, every they... now and then they'll bend the rules. Okay. But when you shoot in Hawaii, there are politics involved. There's mm. the royal family. There's uh, different historically conflicting groups of people in charge of it all. And you need everybody to sign off. Sure. Not just, not just the, um, the people in the building. Well, and also the physical conditions, I imagine, of working in a historic site like that with the crew and decorating and having everybody in and out. And Yes. Well, for example, shooting in the palace, um, they had rebuilt it. I guess it, at one point it was under disrepair, but we had to make it look period. So the exterior of the palace got covered in essentially mulch, like two, you know, two acres of mulch, oh. just a ton of mulch. And we had horseless car we had car um, horseless car we had carriages and horses and all manner of uh, light poles to remove and shrubbery was brought in to hide things we couldn't make go away. Mm -hmm. The building is largely the same as it originally was, so shooting outside of it was just a matter of putting on the bunting for the big celebration and lights and getting everybody in the right clothes. Shooting inside the building was a whole different manner because they said you could be in the building but you can't bring heavy equipment on the wood. The wood is made of koa, mm -hmm. which is a very rare, uh, beautiful Hawaiian wood. And since it was an antique floor, they said you couldn't do that. So we worked our way around that. The whole building is structured with giant rectangular windows that are almost floor to ceiling. And the ceiling is like a double tall ceiling on each level. And the idea was is you'd open these windows up a little bit and you get these wonderful breezes. So what we did is we opened the windows up and we put the camera on a super techno crane. <laughs> and that became our camera in the room. 
So we would be talking here and there'd be a window 20 feet this way and the camera would come in like a robot. Right. And it was all controlled from outside. Okay. There was no lighting on the floor in the room. All the lighting had to come from outside. So there were big restrictions. From an art direction standpoint, there wasn't a lot they could do mm -hmm. because they didn't want you touching stuff. So we would, if we needed something there, someone would hold it. So we actually had a fake wall at one point that was being held by people. Oh, my goodness. You know, everybody had to wear booties because if you walked in there with any shoes at all, even, even your socks didn't count. Barefoot, no good. You had on cloth, cotton, booties, um, you know, foot covers. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was challenging. And um, we shot at a Japanese pavilion that they had that was amazing. And we had to rebuild it, essentially, we had to, because it was gutted, it was empty, they had to decorate it all, so it was wonderful.